Hope that's better. <clears throat> it's good to be here this evening. It's good to see uh, all of you here, and I'm, I'm glad you're all able to make this a priority and come and, and worship with us this evening. We're thankful to see you all here. For those of you who are visiting tonight, I am, I am not your, uh, one of the regular preachers uh, here. I'm, I'm just one of the members that the, uh, the elders, uh, the elders on the, I've allowed the, uh, one of the members on the fourth Sunday evening to come up here and give a, a lesson. And that's, that's where I'm up here uh, tonight. I'm, actually, I was supposed to be up here last month. Uh, however, I got sick and Jamie Reynolds filled in for me, thankfully. And uh, now I switched places with him. And, and so I get to bring the lesson to you tonight. So I'm grateful to be here. I'm thankful for the elders for allowing me to, to be up here as well. Um, so uh, anyway, let's get on with the lesson. <clears throat> At work, one of our sales channels uh, that, that we focus on and that we uh, deal with is, is called that we refer to it as the MRO or the maintenance repair and operations uh, one of our sales channels in this channel we offer many different products such as for, for maintaining uh, repairing tools and equipment and then your 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 um, such such as filters and and oil uh, oil and uh, fittings and plugs things to, to, to maintain and repair equipment and part and tools um, but we also offer, uh, the operation side of that is, is that all the, the daily, day-to-day -day items you use, such as your, all your different blades and bits and um, uh, paint and um, the list goes on and on. Many different uh, things that our customers in the construction industri industry world, industrial rule, world tend to use on a daily basis to, to be able to adequately do their job. <clears throat> well, same kind of goes for our, our spiritual life, for our faith. We, uh, I thought, I thought it maybe I could come up with a, a, de a good lesson about, about how we need to uh, maintain, uh, uh, re repair, and operate our spiritual lives and our own faith. Um, and so that, uh, so that, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. First uh, Timothy chapter two verse fifteen tells us to do your best to present yourself as, to God as one approved. We're instructed to give our best efforts, and, and to be able to present our best version of ourselves to God. And for me, and I think most of us probably, that doesn't come easily. Um, it takes, takes a lot of effort, actually. It takes, and some of us, it takes, uh, for, for myself, it takes a lot of effort sometimes to be able to, to do that, to pre present ourselves, uh, the best version of ourselves to God. Um, <clears throat> And, and also, and, and, and likewise, it, it's important for us, or just like it's important for us to, to regularly maintain our, uh, our equipment, our property, our vehicles, um, uh, our, um, our, even our own health, and, and to avoid some sort of failure, it's important for us to maintain our, our spiritual life as well. And of course, however, when the equipment, the appliances, the health, uh, sometimes when they fail, we have to know that we need the tools and the appropriate uh, uh, means to, to repair or take care of uh, as well. And I think that same concept goes for our, our spiritual life as well. I'm going to begin with the, uh, the operation side. I'm kind of going out of order of my own uh, diagram. Uh, because the operations, I feel like, is where it begins. You need you without the operation side, without your day-to-day -day, uh, operations, uh, the repairs and the maintenance are, are meaningless. They're not. They're not. Uh, they're useless. Okay. So if we if we're not doing our day-to-day -day thing uh, uh, plan and we're not operating, like if you, for example, in your work, if you're operating your equipment day-to-day -day and getting the job done, then the maintenance and the uh, repairs on it are are useless or, or meaningless, right? So, so I wanted to begin with the operations side of it because I feel like that's uh, where, where it needs to start and it's a very, very important part. So like I said, the, the operations side of this channel is the tools, the accessories, and the other things needed on a daily basis to operate and to do the work you're intended to do. In the case of our Christian lives, these tools are what we need um, to have to do in order to, uh, to, to live our Christian life. The first thing on my list tonight would, would be a, a prayer for living. We need, we need to make sure uh, our, our first daily operational thing it would be uh, to have prayer in our lives and be active uh, in a prayer and have a, have a prayerful life. First Thessalonians 5 verse 17 tells us to pray without ceasing. 
giving thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God. <clears throat> and James 5.16 likewise tells us the prayer, the prayer of a righteous person has great power and is working. Do you believe that prayer is powerful? Do you believe that God answers our prayers? Do you have a prayerful life? Do you, do you, is, your, is, there, is prayer very uh, is prayer active in, in, in your day-to-day uh, life or your day-to-day walk with God? <clears throat> we see a lot of examples in, in Scripture that give us, gives us uh, uh, prayers from the Old Testament to, to the New Testament. We see many examples of, of prayer. And we even see Christ our Savior. We see the, the example of prayer that Christ gives us as well to, uh, in the New Testament. This is, a, this is one way that we, this is our communication to God. It's a way we grow closer to God and we can build our, we can build our faith by having a prayerful and active uh, life as well. The second thing on my list is, is personal study. Um, and, and I'll be honest, this is one thing that I, this is one thing I lack in on my, day to, uh, my everyday walk. Uh, something that we need to keep in, important is, is to, be, uh, to, be, to be studious uh, on our daily, daily walk with God as well. Um, and, and 2 Timothy 2.15 tells us to study to show thyself approved. These are, these are the words of God him, Himself. These are the words inspired by God uh, that we have here in the Scripture. And this is how we, this is how we do draw closer to God and we understand uh, what God wants from us and what God understands from us. Or how we, how we understand what God needs from us. We're, we're given, again, we're given numerous exam, examples in the Bible that we can relate to. Um, uh, we're given instruction uh, on how on how we should live. We we see the, those examples in the Bible that, that maybe are similar to what we're going we're dealing with or we're going to going through as well, and we see how uh, characters or others deal with those uh, those issues and problems in the Bible as well. <clears throat> so so the, the uh, so we can strengthen our faith and we can draw closer to God. This the, the our day to day study can help us better understand. His will for us, and then in turn strengthen uh, our faith. And my, my third item on this list here is is the thing we the, the theme of this year's lesson that we've talked about is is the uh, is to uh, shine your light as well. That's I think it's an important important thing for our day to day life as well that we that we are are letting our light shine and and uh, uh, showing others Christ through us and letting Christ work through us in our day to day walk. Because uh, we encounter many, many people. Some of us encounter uh, lots and lots of people throughout the day, and so when we need to make sure we are showing Christ our our uh, our faith and our, our show, shining our light, um, <clears throat> in, imitating Christ uh, the way we should. One example. One example. We've been we've been uh, studying some characters in the in the uh, teen class, and one of the characters we we went over recently was Stephen. And we, we talked about how uh, Stephen's um, the martyr and how he was stoned and and uh, how he, he was he was he was put on trial and he was stoned to death. Um, and we talked about how how much his his uh, that story of Stephen uh, uh, emulated Christ. And it was it was a very similar story to the story that we read of Christ being on trial and being and when he is killed when Stephen was killed. He did virtually the same thing, and he asked them to not be held uh, accountable for this sin. This sin, okay? Uh, he, and and same thing Christ did too. He 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 paid attention to Christ. He he understood, uh, or he 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 tried to model Christ. And I think it's a, it's a, a lesson we can learn from Stephen uh, too that we can we can imitate Christ uh, through our through our day to day walk, just as Stephen did. Uh, and. And in our in our our daily walk with God, when when we are around others, influencing others, we're also we're also teaching others as well. Without sometimes without realizing it, um, I know especially if you're a parent, you're teaching your your children um, to not stick their finger in the light socket or the, the the socket there. You're teaching your kid that it's a bad thing to do, um, and and so I think you know sometimes we don't think about these things as teaching or or uh, or I guess you could say teaching and sometimes influencing others. So uh, in our day-to-day walk, we need, uh, we need to reflect Christ so that we can teach others as well, teach others uh, about Jesus through our, our example and our day-to-day walk with, with Christ as well. 
the last thing on my list for the operation side of it is, is that we need, on our daily operations, that we need to prioritize. Every day uh, when we're making decisions, when we're um, uh, taking actions, we need to make sure we, we are prioritizing uh, God, Christ as, as well, in, in the forefront of our minds. And because we, we, we've, we've given the opportunity, uh, probably in a day-to-day scenario, to, to do, do the opposite and to, to uh, take another, uh, prioritize something else over God and over Christ. And we need to make sure that we, are, uh, we have Christ at the forefront of our minds and prioritize Him in our decision-making and our actions that we take on a day-to-day basis as well. <clears throat> Next part of my lesson, too, is, is going to talk about the maintenance side. As, as most of you know, maintenance is, is very important. Uh, maintenance is, is the work of keeping something in proper condition or the care of upkeep. Most of us are pretty familiar with the idea of, of maintaining equipment or tools or vehicles or maybe appliances in your house um, uh, or even your own health. Even your own health, sometimes you need to, there's things you need to maintain. Um, and so, uh, s- such as, you know, changing the oil in your, in your vehicles, changing filters, maybe there's seasonal lawn equipment. Um, you know, there, there's many different, different forms of maintenance that we have to upkeep and, and keep up with. And, it, and I, think this, I think it's important for us to remember the, the maintenance in our, uh, in our uh, Christian life as well. And the, and the maintenance ideas that I came up with are something, maybe it's not something we do on a daily basis, not something we do every, every single day. Some of it, maybe it is. Some, some things maybe we do. But, but maybe these things that we need to have as a regular habit or a regular a thing that we're doing on a regular basis. So I ask the question, what, what things in my life do I need to do regularly in order to maintain my Christian life? And the first one I put down is, is, is worship services, because we're, we're required to, to meet on the first day of the week. We're instructed by God to, to come and meet and gather on the first day of the week and to worship and, and, uh, and praise God and take part in the Lord's Supper. Um, uh, so so it's, it's an important, it's obviously a required maintenance, um, but it's, it's something that's very important for us to do to, to uh, uh, keep, keep up with our, our maintenance on Christian, our Christian life. And then I got to thinking about our worship services too, and just uh, um, how incredible it, it actually is have, having us having us all here at the same time, together singing praises, uh, lifting praises to God, all in unison, uh, and how powerful and uplifting and encouraging that can be to to each of us and all of us, and how amazing that feeling that it is, um, and not only the, the singing but the praying. Uh, we have one. Uh, an individual come up here and lead us all in prayer. It's, it's all uh, 200 plus or 100, however many people are here, all of, all of us in, in unison lifting a prayer up to God and how amazing that is too and how incredible that is. And that happens thousands of times across the, the world, hopefully. Um, um, so this is, it's such an incredible uh, and an amazing thing that happens. Sometimes we, we do it every week and, or three or several times a week, and so we don't think about it sometimes, but how incredible and how amazing that is and how uplifting and encouraging and how much we need that in our lives. And it's very important that we, are, uh, we have that in our lives. And, um, and, and if, uh, if, if, if you don't make it a habit, if, you don't, if it's not a regular maintenance thing that you do, I would encourage you to do so, do so more often because uh, um, it's very important in our lives to, to have that. And required. Um, another another thing I would uh, put as a, a, a regular maintenance is, is doing some sort of group studies um, or Bible classes. Uh, so we Milwaukee, thankfully Milwaukee Avenue offers Bible classes uh, every Sunday and Wednesday. And if uh, if you're not currently doing the Bible classes, it it's a very encouraging, uplifting thing as well. That's going to help your uh, your faith grow and, and strengthen you and. Um, Bible classes are very, very important too, um, and we, we, it's important for us to, to, to we can engage with uh, with those of our age or those of uh, um, uh, similar similar ages, and we can uh, in, in learn learn and, and encourage one another. Um, and <clears throat> so it's it's important to, for these group studies and these Bible studies. Sorry, I'm getting away from my notes and, and kind of going off the cuff, and I need to get back to my notes. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. 
<clears throat> tells us all Scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate and equipped for, every, for every good work. It's, again, it's important to, to, uh, to have these uh, Bible classes. And, and one thing that's real nice, too, is that we have the, uh, not only do we have Bible classes here, but we'll have the age-specific uh, Bible studies as well. So there's, there's several different Bible studies that are age-specific, and those, those age-specific studies are great because you, you are encountering people who uh, are in your, your same uh, age group, for one thing. Maybe they're going through the same type of uh, life events you are, a category of life, I can't think of a better word for that, but a, a category of, or life that you're in right now, maybe in, there's a lot of people in that, in that group that's in that same kind of category, and, and, or maybe you run into people who have, who's already succeeded past that c- category of, of your life group as well, um, and there's got to be a better word for that, but, but uh, anyways, it's, it's really good f- um, uh, to, to uh, it's really good, really encouraging, really uplifting to be able to to be able to engage in those as well, to be a part of those those studies and those uh, Bible classes as well, <clears throat> and it's I think it's an important uh, maintenance in, in our Christian life <clears throat> that we need to attend. <clears throat> Fellowship was the next one on my list. Very similar, uh, I guess it can kind of go hand in hand with the Bible with the Bible studies too as well. But just just having fellowship as what uh, out, uh, outside of uh, worship uh, with one another, surround yourselves with like minded. Individual with with Christians when when you're able to uh, to to bring your to tr- and try not to try to do that more so than surrounding yourselves with the worldly uh, um, corrupt individuals as well. A few passages out of Psalms tells us whoever walks Psalm 13 verse 20 tells us whoever walks of the wise becomes wise, but the companion of a fool will suffer harm. You know, familiar, some familiar passages in, in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17, iron sharpens iron as one man sharpens another. Proverbs 27, 6 tells us faithful words are the wounds of a friend, but deceitful, profuse, or profuse, uh, are, the kisses of, are the kisses of an enemy. And then one fam- we're real familiar with is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, is bad company corrupts good morals. And just, just to surround yourself with, with uh, like-minded Christian individuals, uh, is, is another uplifting and, and uh, faith-building thing we can do as well to, uh, to continue to maintain our life as well. My last li- thing on the, on the, or my last item to talk about on the maintenance side is, is the teaching, maybe even teaching a Bible class, a study, or a devotion. And I'll be the, one of the first ones to tell you that's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy to, to prepare and to teach a, a, uh, um, a Bible class, a, stu- a Bible study, or a devotion. It's um, it doesn't come natural for me, and I think there's a lot of us doesn't come natural for. Um, and it, like we talked about it earlier, it takes takes a lot of effort, it takes a little, a, a lot of uh, um, time. Um, but but you you will grow if you if when you're when you're teaching that class and you're teaching that uh, that study or that devotional or whatever it is, you're you're probably gonna get more out of it than you're gonna grow more than probably your students in your class, and and um, um, because you put in the time and the study and the effort. Uh, to, to do this, and I think I think it's important that we do this on occasion as well. Uh, maybe this is a, a one of those maintenance items that we need we need to do on uh, on occasion as well. Or I think it's important that this is one of those ma- maintenance things that we do on a, on occasion as well. Um, to teaching others, whether it be kids, uh, children, teen, adults, uh, etc., it will help you grow. Uh, the extra study time that we put in when preparing a lesson or class helps helps us grow closer to God. <clears throat> So we've talked about most of the tools needed to operate and maintain a, a, on a regular basis as a, as a Christian. But the final point I wanted to, to make tonight is, um, is, to, is the repairs side of it too, the, the R in the MRO. This is a topic that's not as much fun, not, not as much enjoyable as uplifting, uh, but, but, but it's something that's needed and necessary. Sometimes when something breaks, we need to have the utensils or the means to repair it. If a household appliance or your vehicle breaks or stops working, then you must, we must take action and we must use whatever means or tools we need to repair it. So I ask the question, when, when our Christian life is breaking or falling apart or wearing out, what steps do we need to re- take to repair uh, a Christian life? 
<clears throat> now these breaks, they, they come in many different forms. Uh, we're all different individuals, and these, these breaks, these failures, these war, wore out parts may come in di- many different forms uh, as well, because we're all different individuals. Um, and so may, it's not, I, there's not one simple answer um, to fix, although I do think there's a couple of, uh, there is a, a, a simple answer that is common uh, that we need for these fix. And the, I think the first step we need to take is that we need to first admit that we have a problem. Because when, when, we, when, we, when we don't admit it and we just kind of push it aside and we just continue going down that path or going on, we, it, the, the problem grows and gets worse and, and gets, or gets bigger or, or the, the bearings get worse and wear out uh, and eventually break. Um, so, so sometimes we, we, need to, uh, we need to be able to confess uh, our, our sins and shortfallings. Maybe, there's, maybe, there's, maybe if there was some sort of sin in your life in some form, or maybe you feel stuck, or maybe you're just unable to overcome. Maybe some sort of temptations are just too great, and you feel attacked. Maybe you're uh, embarrassed and, just, and, and want to stay away. Maybe you become disconnected from God and struggling to get back on track. I think it's important that we first admit to, that we're struggling and we admit we, are sin, we, we have sin in our life or that we've fallen short or we're failing. And then, of course, I think the second, most, the, the second thing and most important thing is to, is, to, is to go to God, of course, in prayer. God is the great physician. He is, he is the one that can heal you or he can put the pieces in place to, for you to find the healing uh, as well. As well. Um, <clears throat> but sometimes we need we need to uh, it takes sometimes it takes a little more it takes a little bit more work on our part as well uh, to find that healing. One of the uh, uh, one way we can find that repair, I think, is to maybe sometimes, and I'm not saying every time this is this is true, but sometimes we just need to dwell heavy on our maintenance and our operations. Okay, um, my dad was a diesel mechanic. And uh, we were working on a uh, an old pickup that hadn't been run in, in years, years and years. And he and he uh, was showing me how to. We had the the engine was locked down, and we had to uh, he just we had to break it loose. And so we uh, put some oil had had to put a lot of extra lubrication in it. Um, had to, had to really had to really lube up uh, some of the pistons and and do whatever we can to get it unstuck. And then of course we had to give it a lot of persuasion and. Um, um, things, things like that. But eventually, it broke loose, and the engine. Um, and after a little bit, of, a little bit of other adjustments, it, the engine was running great. Uh, it was, it was running great. It just needed that extra lubrication, that extra maintenance. And I'm not saying that always does it. That's not always does the trick. But it just needed. Sometimes we just need to focus a little bit more on those, uh, those maintenance and operations things we talked about. Maybe we need to, to dwell extra. In, in, our, in, in the Bible or in, in prayer. Uh, maybe if you're not currently attending the Bible classes, maybe you need to, you know, try, to try to start attending the classes. Or maybe you're not going to some of the Bible studies. Maybe we need to, maybe you need to, to be more active in the, in the studies. And, or, or, and, uh, and maybe, maybe these sort of things can help you to heal the, these things that are, that are broken or failing or, or missing in our lives <laughs> in the repairs. <clears throat> And I think another part of the, another way to repair, I think, is to uh, seek help and encouragement as well. Now, I wanted to, I wanted to make everybody raise their hand and, and ask who, uh, who repairs all their own things. But I'm not going to do that to you. Um, but, but just imagine, if, if, who, who in here can repair everything? Who in here can repair all of their vehicles, all of their uh, um own uh, appliances in your houses, all of your own uh, equipment or tools, who can repair all your own tools and equipment? How many of you here can you repair your own health when your health is failing? Um, so, and I think, that's, I think at that point, maybe that's when we, all the hands would come down in my, <laughs> in my imagination. Uh, but, and, and, and I'll even say my dad was one of those guys that felt like he could fix anything. He, he did fit. He was a diesel mechanic, and he worked on our tractors, our cars, our trucks, our, our all our appliances. I mean, he was one of those that uh, he did fix just about everything. Um, but I do remember the time or two when he himself, a mechanic, would would actually take the cars, take our vehicles to the mechanic 
in the, in the, um, the local mechanic there as well. And um, I'm sorry, Gavin is holding up a sign for me to read. Uh, so, um, but, uh, but he's, uh, but I, I do remember my, my dad even, even needed help sometimes too. Even he needed help from, from uh, uh, others to get things fixed and take on things too. So even, even one, one, of, one of those who thinks they can fix everything will sometimes need help as well. We all need help. We all need encouragement. <clears throat> I know this is a thing that's much, much easier said than done, but we need to reach out to one another for help sometimes. Uh, we need to be more experienced, uh, or sometimes, sometimes maybe, maybe just talking to more experienced Christians, um, someone who's been uh, an experienced Christian for longer, or close friend, family member, neighbor. Um, James chapter 5, verse 16 tells us to confess your sins to one another and pray for, for one another. And of course, most importantly, we, we and I think I've already said this once, but we need to seek God's help and go to God in prayer when, when our life is, is broken or failing or, or having trouble. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 tells us to trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will make straight your paths. When your path is crooked, your path is path is broken, uh, God can fix, fix your path and make your path straight, get you back on, on track. <clears throat> In closing, it's, it's, it, it, as it's especially important to keep your, your equipment, your property, your health well maintained and repair when, when broken or failing, it's, it's even more important that we, um, that, we, that we repair and maintain and operate with, with our, our spiritual life and our faith. Christ teaches us that our soul is much more important than the body. Matthew 10, verses 28, tells us that do not fear those who kill the body but are unable to kill the soul, but rather fear Him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. If you're struggling with, uh, with your maintenance of your faith, or you need to repair your, your spiritual life or your faith, please don't hesitate. The church is here if we deny it. Or maybe you've decided that you are ready to answer the call and you're ready to obey and be baptized in Christ tonight. Please come forward as we all stand and sing.